Hello and welcome. It's EFB20 swap. I'm trying to get this thing off the ground. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Okay, so here's all the wiring that we're going to have to deal with. It seems really insane at the moment to have all this wiring to have to deal with, but trust me, it looks a lot worse than it really is. Now this is the harness that we're going to have to put back on the car and on the new engine. So we're going to have to modify it. The reason why is, is it's actually the most simple thing to do. Unless you would like to go to ryewire.com and purchase a budget B or D series harness and spend roughly anywhere from four to $500 on a fresh brand new plug and play harness. This is what you're going to have to do is modify this harness right here you can see i've got some tools over here i've got a little pick some wire cutters some needle nose pliers and some electrical tape i'm going to solder all the connections after the fact because there's so many of them i'm going to do that off camera so we have the original dx harnessed right here dual point so this is our obd1 injector wiring harness it has the four injectors plus the uh, power block which is right there we're not going to be using a resistor box because we're using OBD1 injectors. We have an OBD2 alternator plug there and then an OBD2 distributor plug there. Now this, this is a harness that was given to us with the mounts. It's basically a VTEC sub harness. The only thing we're going to be using this harness for is the O2 sensor. Uh, we're going to see how much of that we can fit in. And the last but not least is actually just an OBD2 engine harness that we're going to cut up and use. You don't have to do this. You can go and buy a new roll of wire if you want. Um, I had this laying around my shop, so I brought it with me. This way I can kind of color code things and stay organized that way. So that's pretty much it. So now I'm going to have to start this process and uh, get busy. Okay, now the main thing to focus on is the injector wiring. Because we're using OBD1 injectors, we have we have the four injector wires right here, and this is the block, power block that feeds it. So if you look, the wires are quite simple. You have four wires here, they're twisted together to show separation. So you have four wires here that are yellow with a black stripe, and then four wires here that are red, blue, yellow, and brown. Now, the four wires that have the yellow and black stripe are going to go to four wires uh, for yellow and black stripe right here. We're gonna be wired to this block here and this one wire that I have that I ejected from the harness at the junkyard. Uh, this is actually going to be the power wire that feeds all of these wires. If you notice, this has a little block here that plugs in and it's just a metal ring that loops all of these wires together to feed them all so that they all have power. Without that block, the injectors will not work. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and connect these wires, um, get some more wire for the injectors and extend those. And then once we kind of build this harness here, we're then gonna integrate it into the DX harness. So here is the injector wire with the four injectors. I have run the power to a power block. Now this is the wire that needs to go. This is the new TPS sensor plug that I'm using off of the OBD2 harness. And you notice from left to right, it goes green, red, yellow. The old plug goes yellow, red, green. And that's because on the DX models, the TPS sensor is backwards. So if you keep this plug, you have to flip the yellow and the green wire. So it ends up like this. You have to extend the wires anyway, so I just use the OBD2 plug. Okay, so here is the finished harness that I have here. All right, so this is the driver wall side plug. This is the extended TPS sensor, the extended air idle uh, control sensor. Um, we have the alternator plug that's been converted to an OBD2. We have the four injector wire clips here. 
with the block, power block, right here. This is still the air temperature sensor. Uh, the oil pressure sensor sending unit. The thermostat ground right here. Okay. And along with uh, the fan switch that goes right next to it. It's got a little extra link there. Starter wire. Then over here, we have the OBD2 distributor plug. along with the temperature gauge wires right here and as well as the reverse sensor here uh, and then it comes over to the regular plugs at the passenger side firewall as well as the fuse box plug here and if you notice there's an extra plug here that is clearly not OBD0 and what this is is this is a sub harness that I've made for the uh, multi-point fuel injection that way if the harness ever needs to come back out of the car there's an extra plug here um, if you notice the wires on it are split into two sections uh, four of these wires are for the injectors uh, brown red blue yellow for one two three four And then there's another two wires that are for the cylinder sensor and the distributor. I have run them all here. Um, so it's quite simple. Uh, I've got these marked out as to what these, what and where these need to be. Obviously I've shown you diagrams for um, all of these, as complicated as it seems. Um, if you need more info, you can search Google and find what you need. Obviously what I did was I kind of salvaged an OBD2 harness and used the connectors and the pins, um, soldered everything, made the harness this way. Now the reason I didn't sit here and go through every single wire, you know, line by line is just because it would take way too much time and, uh, you know, at the end of the day I just had to get it done and sometimes, you know, filming is, is a bit more difficult, but it is basically simple. Now, if you notice there is something missing here, on this plug I've gone ahead and cut off the O2 sensor. And there's no O2 sensor on this harness. Now, if there was, I would have uh, chosen a bigger plug and had to add four more wires. But the reason I have not done that, I have a separate harness here that has um, o an O2 sensor plug on it. This is basically given to us. It was made by Monotech. Now, to be honest with you, the plug on the other end really isn't going to match anything that we have. However, um, what I'll do is eject each pen and wire it accordingly to the OBD0 to OBD1 jumper harness accordingly. The only wires that we need to worry about, um, We'll go ahead and plug up the NOx sensor and the O2 sensor, although we're running a PR4 ECU, which does not look for a NOx sensor, but we'll just run the wire anyway, um, in case in the future he does decide to go VTEC, the harness will be there. This plug is gonna have to go bye-bye, 
and we'll just wire it up to the uh, VTEC sub harness and it will disconnect nice and neat there. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you don't, if you get into a situation like this where you're like, oh God, what are these? Luckily these are color coded. So all I have to do is look at the wire down here and then come up here and look at the color of the wire here. So this is blue and black. And then obviously blue and black would be a signal and ground for that sensor. For a B-series swap, uh, when you're putting it in an EF that was originally dual point injection, this is definitely the most um, labor intensive wiring. It's not impossible and it's not that hard. It just takes a little more time. So if you feel brave enough and you are intelligent enough and you do your research, let me say that one more time. Do your research. Please don't quote my video on one thing that I said because your wiring harness may be different with colors and your situation may be different because someone may have modified your car before. But take your time, think it out, do it thoroughly and just be patient and you'll be able to knock it out in no time. This is currently where I stand. We have the harness on the engine. Uh, I've still got to go and do all the wiring at the floorboard. Okay, so this is the uh, OBD0 to OBD1 jumper. Here's the OBD1 plugs. Here's the jumper from the OBD0. Now, to use this, you basically have to convert the harness into an SI harness um, because these this is for SIs and all-wheel drive wagons, basically, and four-door EXs, I believe. Now, I haven't pulled the pan yet, but here are the extra wires I'm sending into the engine bay, the four fuel injector wires, and uh, the two cylinder sensor wires for the... Uh, distributor. Now there's also the addition of the sub harness here on the jumper harness and these wires deal with the O2 sensor, uh, VTEC pressure, VTEC uh, solenoid, NOx sensor, and AIBs if you're running a GSR. So this we're not going to worry about at the moment till we can get the motor running. The only thing we're really gonna have to worry about with this is the O2 sensor. We're gonna be running a stock PR4 ECU, stock PR4 ECU, which is a um, 92 to 93 LS computer. Should run this B20 uh, pretty well. Eventually, uh, if he wants, he can chip it and uh, put a B20 program on there. But this will uh, get him driving around and uh, get the motor running fine. Okay, so here we have the three plugs for the OBD0 ECU, okay? Try to make this as simple as possible if I can. Okay, so this is considered the A plug. It's the biggest plug. You can go on Google, like I have. You can see the top one is the dual point and the bottom one is the multi-point. Now they have it colored in under the colors it needs to go to. So I'm gonna show you here on this plug that you're gonna count from uh, right to left. So it's one, two, three, four. Because number one is brown, number two is red, number three is blue, <laughs> and number four is yellow. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna leave these pinned in here. I'm gonna cut the wires back here and leave me plenty of room. So now I have just cut these four wires. You don't have to worry about the other ends of them. It's not gonna matter. Now we're just gonna use these as the pigtails. So I'm gonna take this first wire here and forget about these three, okay? Do it one wire at a time. Now I've got my four injector wires. The first one is gonna be brown. Okay, see that? So I am going to strip both these back, twist them together, solder it, and tape it. I'm gonna do that, and I'll be right back because I can't really hold the camera in this position. Okay, so our injector wiring is finished here. Okay, number one, here. You can see this yellow wire coming out of number one, right here, goes up to the brown wire. Number two, even though it's yellow, it goes up to the red wire. Okay, it's number two. Number three has a red wire coming out and going to the blue. Number four has a red wire coming out and going to the yellow. So brown one, red two, blue three, and four yellow. And pretty much that's what it'll look like. You got the four wires coming out. And you can see this is my separate injector harness. So now we have four injectors wired up.
the next step is going to be dealing with the other two wires for the cylinder sensor. So the middle smaller plug is the B plug. The third plug is the C plug. The orange wire positioned in um, C1, okay, and this is looking at it from the back. It should be an orange wire. We have to remove that and move it to B10, as well as C2, move it to B12. So we have to remove, if you look on here, there are two wires in the C1 and 2 position. So that's top and bottom. The orange wire is in C1 and the white wire is in C2. We have to remove both of those, but we're gonna take one wire at a time. So we're gonna remove the orange wire, which is C1, and move it to the empty slot on the bottom here at B10. There's a white with a red stripe in B12, which we'll also have to remove and put the white wire in, but we're gonna depen it and see how well that goes. So how to depen this thing is, find something very skinny and strong, stick it in the middle hole, push until, and pull on the wires until they eject out. Okay, now, so I've got the orange wire out. That is going to go over to this other black plug. It's gonna slide into the empty slot of B10. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You should hear a clicking sound. Now the orange wire is in B10. Now the white wire that I have ejected has got to go to B12, where the white and red wire is, so I have to eject that. Okay, so I got the white and red wire ejected by using the same process. So now I'm going to insert the white wire. I hear a click. Yes, I heard it. So there it is. The orange and white wire is now in at B10 and B12 the way it should be. Now, the other trick is, is we have to wire in the two wires that are sent from the distributor back to where C1 and 2 were. Okay. Now, the tricky part about that is that basically I can use this dead wire um, clip and plug it in but we're still one short so I'm probably going to have to find another wire to eject and use to plug into C2 or worst case scenario I just uh, cut the two wires at the jumper harness here and uh, run them that way okay I found another wire that I can use it was at C16 it is a white wire I have put the end on it and the reason why I can use it is because it was for the OBD-002 sensor. We are not using that in this case. We will be using an OBD-102 sensor, which will be connected through the sub-harness. Now I'm going to connect this into C2, which is the blue and yellow wire. It's clipped in. Now we're going to plug in the jumper harness. Now we've plugged the jumper harness in to OBD-1. Now we're gonna plug in the OBD-1 ECU. Here it is. Now we still have a little bit more wiring to do with the sub harness and the O2 sensor, but we're gonna see if this thing runs. Okay, we're gonna see if this thing runs. Put the key in. Check engine light on, check engine light off. What a dick. Wagon life. Bucket status. Oh my god, that is some nice speakers.